Trying to be witty leads to lying, more or less. What I just told you about the lamplighters isn't completely true, and I risk giving a false idea of our planet to those who don't know it. Men occupy very little space on Earth. If the two billion inhabitants of the globe were to stand close together, as they might for some big public event, they would easily fit into a city block that was 20 miles long and 20 miles wide. You could crowd all humanity onto the smallest Pacific island. Grown-ups, of course, won't believe you. They're convinced they take up much more room. They consider themselves as important as the Baobabs. So you should advise them to make their own calculations. They love numbers, and they'll enjoy it. But don't waste your time on this extra task. It's unnecessary, trust me. So once he reached Earth, the little prince was quite surprised not to see anyone. He was beginning to fear he had come to the wrong planet, when a moon-colored loop uncoiled on the sand. Good evening, the little prince said, just in case. Good evening, said the snake. What planet have I landed on? asked Little Prince. On the planet Earth, in Africa, the snake replied. Ah, and are there no people on Earth? It's the desert here. There are no people in the desert. Earth is very big, said the snake. The Little Prince sat down on a rock and looked up into the sky. I wonder, he said, if the stars are lit up so that each of us can find his own someday. Look at my planet. It's just overhead but so far away. It's lovely, said the snake. What have you come to Earth for? I'm having difficulties with a flower, the little prince said. Ah, said the snake. And they were both silent. Where are the people? The little prince finally resumed the conversation. It's a little lonely in the desert. It's also lonely with the people, said the snake. The little prince looked at the snake for a long time. You're a funny creature, he said at last, no thicker than a finger. But I'm more powerful than a king's finger, the snake said. The little prince smiled. You're not very powerful. You don't even have feet. You couldn't travel very far. I can take you further than a ship, the snake said. He coiled around the little prince's ankle like a golden bracelet. Anyone I touch, I send back to the land from which he came, the snake went on. But you are innocent, and you come from a star. The little prince made no reply. I feel sorry for you being so weak on this granite earth, said the snake. I can help you someday if you grow too homesick for your planet. I can... Oh, I understand just what you mean, said the little prince. But why do you always speak in riddles? I solve them all, said the snake. And they were both silent. The little prince crossed the desert and encountered only one flower, a flower with three petals, a flower of no consequence. Good morning, said the little prince. Good morning, said the flower. Where are the people? The little prince inquired politely. The flower had one day seen a caravan passing. People? There are six or seven of them, I believe, in existence. I caught sight of them years ago, but you never know where to find them. The wind blows them away. They have no roots, which hampers them a good deal. Goodbye, said the little prince. Goodbye, said the flower.